This sitting took place on December the 23rd, 1960. Sitters, the Mill Hill Medium Leslie Flint, the Sitters, the Mill Hill Group, with daughter Margaret and son Roland. Well, I won't ask you the obvious questions because I already know the answers, but I do want you to know that I am, I am still obviously very interested in your little group and I do attend as regularly as I possibly can. And though you may feel perhaps a little disturbed about it, yes. we're not um, so unhappy ourselves. We feel there is progress there. Well, you do? Oh, yes. <laughs> Why do you laugh? I don't know. I say from year to year we go along and we think, well, surely by Christmas or by something, you know, we shall have got further, but I don't know. Well, I, I, I personally, I think that you have done so badly. You haven't had any spectacular results, of course. No. But you do get results. Yes. And you do know that you're in touch. And you oh, do yes. get definite contacts. <laughs> and there is a wonderful influence and power there. And there's no doubt later on, results, the sort of results which you anticipate and hope for will come. They will. But at the same time, it's no getting, dis no getting despondent about it. No, no. And I think in a way, it was just as well that um, you had to fall back on your own resources. Would you think it's made any difference? I don't think it's done any harm. I think that it's made you depend a little more on yourselves. Do you? Yes. I didn't think it had sort of made any difference in a way. I well, can't see how it could. I, I found it so disturbing, to tell you the truth, it just sort of knocked everything away from me. Well, I'm very sorry about that, but <laughs> of course, I am, you must appreciate my point of view. Right. That is that my part of my job yes. is to take care of the instrument of yes. yours yes. and there's no getting away from the fact that he was so hammering away yes. that if something were not done, done very quickly and very definitely, his mediumship would have gone forever, yes. apart from his health. Yes. Yes. And right. we had no alternative. Yes. And it's no good making rules and regulations for some and not for others. No. I mean, the point is that we had to do something and do it very quickly. Uh, what we hope later on we can review this whole situation and make other alterations and changes which will benefit those who, like yourselves, find great difficulty in coming in the daytime. Mm -hmm. In other words, perhaps one evening per fortnight or something of the oh, range. That's, that's what we anticipate to do in the new year, but uh, sometime. But at the moment we've got to see that he does obey our orders. Yes. I must admit I've been a little annoyed this last week or two because he hasn't been completely fulfilling what we've asked him to do. But um, oh, I must say mean. that on the whole he hasn't been too bad, better than I anticipated anyway. It's very difficult to But as he well you know. knows, he knows well enough now that if he does overtax himself, he does try to do too much, then we should just stop coming, at least on occasions, and he won't be any better off. So yeah. he might just as well fulfill the obligations. It is very difficult though, you know, for him. I when know. You know, I know what mediums you are very inclined to be over-sensitive, over, -sensitive, over well over indulgent uh, in fact honestly to be a good medium you've got to be a very weak character we've got a very good medium yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 oh, no truth no. is truth i don't believe in beating about the bush no i uh, know there's some very fine qualities there yeah. it's very but, difficult um, to refuse people and you know it means well, so much to them Charles. i'm not saying one way or the other but well, my know, dear you've, you've had plenty to say haven't you yes i have <laughs> yes but not about that no, 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 no. Oh, no. But, not about um, his health or anything. No, no, I'm not thinking of that. No. You're only <laughs> human like the rest. Mm -hmm. You said a few things about me. <laughs> well, it's just the shock of it, you know. You sort of suddenly you think, well, surely there should be some reason or well, something said or given. There is a very good, really good reason. You may say, oh, well, it was unfair to cut off, as it were, mm -hmm. all those who could only come working people in the evenings, but... I, I had to do something, to do something and um, yeah. I knew that if I were lax about this in one measure, mm -hmm. uh, well, soon other things would crop up. I am sorry, but yeah. I did the best. Yes. Yes. Anyway, you're right. here. Yes, my dear, we are. We're Christmas is upon you, yes. and the spirit of goodwill. <laughs>
bless it. Oh, dear. Apparently, if everyone had the spirit of Christmas every day of their lives, what a different world it would be. It would, mm. but I'm afraid. Well, I don't know. You've done well. What did you say? I said you've done well. I've done well. Yeah. In what respect do you mean, I've done well? Well, I think that when you make a decision that you know is right and you carry it forward. Well, one has to. Mm. Sometimes, you see, in life, in your life just as much as in ours, and whatever we are endeavouring to do for the good of others, when we are inclined to consider what is the best thing to do, sometimes in doing what is right for the majority, uh, others have to suffer to some extent. You know, it's very, very rare in life, in your world, that you can do something that you feel is good for one person without in some way possibly affecting yes. another. And uh, it's a very difficult position to be placed in, mm -hmm. but I think we did the right thing at the right moment. And as I say, I hope it'll only be temporary. Yeah. But of course, that evening, even if it was just occasionally, but it seemed as though... Well, I should I think we can possibly but relax <laughs> this, providing, for instance, that he didn't work in the daytime, he could probably work one evening, perhaps a fortnight, you see. Uh, that would be all right if he were to keep to that. But um, knowing the man I'm dealing with, I doubt it. Still, it's a time of goodwill, so let's forget it. Yes, my dear, of course. My goodness, there's no... Nice to see your son back from his wanderings. Yes, And how is Sinbad? How is Sinbad? How are you, Roland? I'm okay. Oh, are you? <laughs> Sinbad. Sinbad. Mm. Not a very apt name, because I don't think he's particularly a sinner, and I don't think he's particularly bad. No. Always think of Pedro the Fisherman <laughs> when I'm thinking about Roland. Yeah. Pedro the Fisherman? Yes. And the way he let you, and he seems to be coming along on a wave, and before you can say Jack Johnson, he's knocking at the door, and that's the end of that again. I think he's a little more settled, but... Well, I do hope so. It's yeah. taking a long time to grow up, I suppose. Well, I should have thought at his time of life, what are you now, 19, 20? 20. You should be grown up now. Mm. Goodness me. <laughs> it should be. He's like Peter Pan, never grow up. Uh, Peter Pan. Oh, oh. Roland. I don't think Roland's a fairy. No, far <laughs> <I> from <promise. laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope not. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, I must go. If I don't get an opportunity to come back, I wish each one of you a very happy Christmas and a very peaceful and prosperous new year. And may all your dreams and hopes come to pass. Charles, there's one thing I'd like to say. Thank you for the pound. Oh, my, the what? The pound. <laughs> oh, don't blame me for that. <laughs> don't blame me. Don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. You do I, I, I have nothing to do with uh, money. <laughs> It's all right, you promised one, one came along just like that, so at least I'd say thank you. <laughs> all right, but um, it's purely coincidence. At least I should imagine so, I have no recollection of <laughs> trying to wangle anything for you. But I would, if I could, in yes. some respects, do a little wangling for you. I know you would. Anyway, yes. I'm sure you're going to find that you will do what you have set your heart on in the spring. Oh, I hope so. This time you will not be the down. Oh. <laughs> when are you coming back from your trip, Sinbad? I don't know. We're in the London Doctor another five weeks yet. Yeah. I see. And well, I wish trip. you well on your voyages. <laughs> Save that money hard, boy. Yes, yeah. <laughs> do. I'd be, I'd be able to buy a little business in the end of five years if you save hard. If I save hard. I haven't done so bad, really. No, yeah, no, 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 you could have done much better. You could have done better, but that's right. That's what I used to say at school. Don't let yeah. it best, never let it best. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to speak for you. I can't oh. wish you happy new year. Yes. It's so nice to be here with all our friends, huh? Yes. Yes. I just want you to know that in spite of the fact that I have not been able to come and speak with you, I have been regularly to you in your house, you know? Yes. For me, it is great pleasure today to come and talk with you. Greetings. And you must not be too tense, child. No. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. You are so tense. I know how important all this is to you, but I just want you to try to realize that when you are so tense, it is more difficult for us. 
I haven't had that before. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I know. Okay, I thought I, I got over that. <laughs> I have been better recently, haven't I? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to read That was not true. No, not true then. No. <laughs> sometimes you are better and sometimes you are worse. But always you are sincere. And I would not change you for anything. Nor would anyone else here change you for anything. Because you are as you are. After all, that is what is important about every human being. That they are as they are. Good, bad, indifferent, everything. After all, that is what makes people interesting. If it all were the same, out of the same pattern, it would be terrible. Life would be boring. <laughs> One could not live with anyone because they were too like yourself. No, no, no. I think it is as well that you are as you are. But it is true what uh, Sister Teresa said, that when you sit in a circle, particularly if you are so tense, mm -hmm. it does somehow make difficulty in communication. Uh, I know it is very difficult. I want you to try and look upon this as the most natural thing, the most ex normal thing, not something extraordinary, uh, but something that is reality in itself, mm -hmm. as you do, I know, but not to feel also tense about it. I felt tense in the circle. I didn't think I had. No, not, not so much in the circle, but no. here today, you have been so calm in the hours <laughs> and so excited <laughs> about it that it oh. is just like, I don't know, a balloon full of gas. You know, you think it will go pop. <laughs> 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 Oh dear, really. Yeah. But this you say it is a disappointment, perhaps to you, but it is not to me. It isn't. No, no, no. because no. we have had some very happy times. Yeah. You have received the inspiration and mm -hmm. the word of the Spirit, and there is so much there that is satisfactory. I, I don't know why you should feel so disheartened about it. It's just because I'm so anxious to do something. Well, I know, you but... Know, uh, do something with it. Uh, but you <laughs> must realize that these things do take time. Yes. Even as you know, but not to think, because sometimes very little seems to come that you are not making any progression. As we've told you before, it will come, and yes. when it comes, no doubt it will be very sudden, because Obviously, by the time you have reached that point where you think, ah, oh, you know, nothing again. <laughs> the very next week it may be ideal the condition and we'll be able to manifest. Once I get through, once other people get through, then we shall continue to get through and it will improve and improve. Yes, I think Monty, we can do. Monty is a tower of strength to mm -hmm. us in the circle. Thank you. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean it. I'm very serious, you know. I think that you are so essential because you give us so much power and you are an instrument and you receive a great deal, uh, which sometimes you are a little afraid perhaps to give off because you are afraid it may be your thoughts or your own imagination. Yeah. I know it is difficult sometimes, obviously, to know exactly what is uh, from the spirit and what is not. But you should give off all that we give to you, or all that you receive, even if you are doubtful of its source. Know that it is only by doing that that you can sift it and find for yourselves. But the whole point is that in your development you must give forth all that you receive. Often that which you hold back may be the most valuable part. Yeah. <coughs> I received your message the other day. You were so, there. So, the name, so, Julia. See. Was it right? Julio, Julio, Julio. Have you ever uh, used that name? Have I ever used it? I mean, to uh, to make your presence sort of... Oh, I've used many names, but each no, one... But, uh, uh, Julio. I'll take that instance. Well, that is uh, important in my career, of course, but um, it is a non de plume. It is a name which I have used for various reasons. Perhaps when I did not want to be fully recognized or did not want to be recognized, I have called myself this, I have called myself that. <laughs> After all, I consider myself the, not the important part. It is the message that I have to give. Her, to give. I myself am, as I feel, in a sense, unimportant. It is what I have to give to the world. After all, you do not judge. You do. You do not judge the uh, the the uh, envelope. 
It is what is inside the envelope that matters. If the envelope has been fallen in the dirt and the dust and it is filthy dirty by the time it is delivered to you and you don't like the look of it, you don't destroy it and not read the message. It is the message inside that's important. Yeah. Look at the mediums. <laughs> well, we are. I know. I mean, after all said and done, there are many instruments who we have to use because there is no other way. I do not condemn, it's not for me to condemn, but there are many instruments who in themselves are far from perfect instruments, are far from, well, sincere people sometimes even, but at least they have within themselves some power which makes possible links and contacts between our world and yours. We value the instruments, but if they could be on a higher moral and mental and spiritual plane, then of course it would help us tremendously. But if we understand, we understand humanity, we make allowances, we don't expect perfection, we are not perfect. But there are times when we feel the instruments that we use, it would be so much better if they made an effort themselves to change, because it would make the contact and the link stronger and better for us. Uh, besides, I don't want to talk about mediums. We are grateful to them. <laughs> George, you are very quiet. Yes, I am. I've been listening to you. I was always brought up now. He always told me it's very, very rude to interrupt. Well, that may well be. But um, if you do not interrupt, often you do not learn very much. Neither do people think you have much personality. The person who sits quietly in the corner and laps it all up may learn a great deal. But at the same time, nobody thinks much of him. They say, who's that odd one in the corner? <laughs> You have to assert your personality if you want to be recognized, if you want to make any progress. And after all, by asking questions, at least you may learn something if people are kind enough to reply and if they are intelligent enough to know the answers. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, any questions? I'm always the one with all the questions. What about you? Hmm? Have you ever had to absorb that little yes. you? you have to absorb it. Yes. Ruby, you want me to go on with the book? Of Just course I want you to you go, want me to go on. I don't care what other people say or what other people think. No. The book, to me, is important. It is. Oh, that's all right. Um, you must not expect everyone will understand. No. You must remember that there are people who, with all the goodwill that they may have in their makeup, yes. are not ready to receive or to understand no. or appreciate certain okay. things. We must always be conscious of the fact mm -hmm. that there are people who in themselves are kind, but are not necessarily wise. Uh -huh. um, now, what about identity? Uh, can you help me with this bit of confusion? It is confusing, you know. How you do you mean about identity? Well, it's very difficult sometimes. I told you, I told you tonight, today, that identity as such means nothing to no. me. I do not care to <laughs> uh, who uh, believes mm -hmm. That, uh, that it is I. I mean, I, I don't matter. No. That's how I feel. Well, we've got over that part of the book, actually. Now I'm on to the higher teachings. I feel as I want to understand a little bit myself. I mean to say, I, I think I've led up into this and gone on to the higher teachings, but I don't really understand them fully myself. I understand you as you are now. But that is just as well that you don't fully understand. Oh, yes, it's very, very difficult. Because it rather proves to you you don't know what you're writing about. Yeah. Which, <laughs> means, which means it is not you. If you knew everything that you were writing, it was understandable to you and intelligent and intelligible to you. You could say, oh, well, this could be my mind. But if certain things are written which puzzle you and you read them over and over again, they still don't make sense to you, that is a good proof that it can't be you. You think it is? Of course. No, I don't know. I think you are very intelligent, but I don't think you are all that intelligent. No, I, I know, I'm not. I mean, that is the point. I mean, to say, when you, when you talk about your higher self, when you are in your own conditions, what are you like? How can I think of you like that? In other words, you do not like to think of me without form, no, I think without shape, not without really, but personality. The thing is, if it is to be. But the whole point is that you must remember that we may have many forms and many shapes yes, through many incarnations or many conditions of life. I know. And that we can assume these shapes, yes. and these forms, uh, accordingly. Yes. But the high essence or the highest form of development of the soul. Not that I've reached that myself, yeah. but the more highly developed one becomes, mm. the less essential it is for one to have what the world terms, as you understand, on earth shape or form. After all, what really matters is that we are consciousness, we are a force within ourselves. We have created something 
gradually through the process of change and time and experience, uh, which in itself can animate many forms and many shapes, as it can inhabit many worlds or many spheres of activity of life. We must not confine the human being uh, to one shape or one form or one place. In the evolution of things, as we progress and develop, so we can gradually assimilate many things which to your mind would be impossible to grasp. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that I can assume myself as I was last on earth, yes. or I can assume if I wish as I was in previous incarnations, yes. and I, I know this can be very puzzling to you and it can be very puzzling to many people who yes. don't understand, but the whole point is that each of my different incarnations or each of my different forms of evolution on this side, yes. each have, as it were, um, some part of me, yes. but at the same time none of them are complete in themselves. No. How can they be? Yeah. What I'm trying to tell you is that form and shape is important, but it is not the all important thing. No. It is after all only the casket that holds some part mm. of the soul, and the soul in itself is not with shape or with form, but it is intelligence, it is being, it is knowledge, it is experience, it is life, it is the essence, it is the spirit, it is that part of us which is indestructible, whereas the forms and the bodies and the shapes can often uh, be assumed, because it is nothing to assume something by thought force, by the power of thought you can take on, as yes. it were, something that you wish to become for the moment of identity or for the appearance or for the whatever the case may be. But after all said and done, you are not in the shape and the form. People know you and recognize you by your shape and your form, but they do not really know you. No. The point is they know an aspect of you but they cannot know the complete you. That which animates your body is the thing that matters. Yes. And when your body dies, as the world understands it, mm -hmm. you lose your shape and form, but you have your astral the counterpart. Yes. But don't forget that as you progress in the astral worlds and you assimilate greater knowledge, then gradually you go into a different environment, a different condition of life, and you lose the old astral body and take on the spiritual body. Yes, okay. And as you progress beyond further, so you take on another form. But you can enter into the old worlds, once which were your habitat, and then you can assume, to some extent, what you were previously. Can these operate together? Can these operate on different... It is possible, it is, it is possible uh, that, um, you see, the mind, I, I, when I say the mind, I do not mm. mean the brain. No, no, the no, animating no. force, if yes. you like, of life can animate several forms at the same time, if necessary. Oh, that's what I was trying to get at. I mean to say, um, suppose I'm just taking this because it's the only one I know. Could I speak to Lucretia? <laughs> Perhaps not that particular one, but a similar thing. Part of me has gone on. Is that still over there? I know what you're trying to tell okay. me, and you're asking me, but um, yes, it is possible. It is but, um, possible. In a short of a word. You see, what I'm trying to explain to you is uh, that one can split oneself up yes. in a kind of way, that is, by thought power. I mean, for instance, you can do exactly the same thing in your world. Do you not realize that you can be sitting, for instance, uh, in your home, in a chair, and you can be conscious of the people around and about you in the room in which you sit, and yet by the power of thought, yes. you can be transported. Have you never fallen asleep, as it seemed to you, and been conscious of people in the wrong, in the normal way, and yet you have been having a vivid dream, as you would refer to it, yes. or experienced miles away? Yes. That is a case where you are animated, in a sense, in two places at the same time. Yes, a sort of, a, oh, I suppose it's an, an advanced And after all, you have scientific proof Yes. What about your television mm. or your wireless? You can be sitting in a room and yet a person's voice may be hundreds and thousands of miles away and yet be with you and thousands and thousands of other places at the same time. Yes, well, you see, when you come to write that in the book, for instance, and I go on to the higher teachings and you say, do not think of me as I was, I, I must know within myself but there's no what reason, you mean. There's no reason why you should not think of me as I was, if that gives you happiness and pleasure. After yes. all, that is all that you can remember. Yes. And I would not really deny you that. Why should I? No. But no, what no, I no, want no. you to grasp is that that is you. only one aspect of yes. me. Yes. It, it may not even be by any means the most satisfactory or the happiest one. 
He put it is yeah. to you important because you are still on an earthly vibration. Yeah. No matter how much you strive to reach away from it, <laughs> you are <laughs> still on an that. earthly vibration. Yeah. And therefore you can so far as yet only really adjust your mind to me in particular uh, on that one vibration. You may have mental aspiration and you yeah. don't have mental reciprocation as it were from me. You receive inspiration and guidance and you know yeah. to some extent of my presence and feeling for me. But the whole point is that when it comes to a material shape, yeah. naturally you think of me as you have seen me. Yeah. I do not object to that and there is a great deal of truth in it. I yeah. am still in a sense like that. Yeah. And after all said and done, uh, I do animate such a body. Yes. So uh, yes. you are true to think, and it is right that you should think of me in that shape and that form. Yes, because but I do not it. want you to think, not only of me, but of other people, that we are confined to that one aspect of self. No. Because it is only one aspect. <coughs> yes, I, I think that's much clearer. You know, I, I just, I got lost beyond that point. Well, mm -hmm. everyone gets lost. I get lost in a sense. <laughs> After all, I get so far and I think, I want to go further, I want to know more, I want to experience everything that is possible to experience. Yes, you've got just the same temperament, haven't you? Of course. Yes. <laughs> but we must remember that we are outside of time. Yes. That, in a sense, we are <coughs> in eternity. And no one can grasp the meaning of eternity. No. no but if we can remember and realize that by experience we are constantly changing our views and our outlook mm -hmm. and our experience has taught us new things, new knowledge, and in consequence we have changed. Mm -hmm. Then as we change, obviously we are gaining, but at the same time we still retain some part of the old self. And what I'm trying to convey is that if this is so, and it has been so over periods of hundreds of years with me, as it has with you and with other people, mm -hmm. then obviously if we have gone through hundreds of years of experiences in different shapes and forms, different lives, different conditions and so on, then obviously there must be, and we know that there are untold thousands upon thousands, if one must use the term time, of experience ahead. In other words, we are going through time, and though we may to a certain extent be conscious of time because to some extent we are affected by it, when we, particularly when we are on a material plane such as the earth, we know that from birth to grave is a period of time, but we do not begin at birth, neither do we end at death. <laughs> we, we are going constantly on. We are traveling on because we are not seen by others before birth, or we may not be seen by others after death. doesn't mean to say we do not exist. You do not question electricity, you do not question all sorts of things you take for granted because you do not see them, you know what they can achieve, you know what power there is there, and so it is with life. Life is in eternal, indestructible. It is only the, the condition of which the, uh, that life has had to experience, under which it has had to work or have its being. In other words, it is only the, 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 the physical aspect which um, is in itself changeable. The mental and spiritual aspect, the soul aspect, is, is ever going on. Yes. That it is only the physical which is changing. Yes. And through a consciousness such as yours, uh, in its complete form, you could all, you could reach anywhere, couldn't you? I of mean, course. Say, of anyone course. could register through it. Of through course, it. that is so. And what is the attitude, really? Does it have to be one of absolute and complete reverence, or can it be just sort oh, of friendly, reverence. lovely feeling? Nobody wants reverence. Not in the accepted orthodox sense. No. Uh, nothing is further from the truth that no. we want reverence. No. We only ask. Or even love. those who come through you. We only ask for love and cooperation yes. and understanding. Uh -huh. We do not expect you to always understand everything we say to you. We do not want you to approach us as if we were saints. No. We are not saints. No. We would not be so foolish as to assume for one moment that we were perfect. We know we are far from perfect, because how can there be such a thing as perfection? If you achieve perfection, what is there left for? To live, to know, to know. No, 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 no. We are like you, people who have lived on earth and had our being, experienced many things, good, bad, and indifferent, always on the road of eternal progression. But we are not perfect. We are all travelers together. Some are on the road further advanced, and some are by the wayside. They're tired and exhausted and cannot go any further. 
and that why it, why it is that it behoves us to stay sometimes, to give them the helping hand, to talk with them, to encourage them, to spur them on, even though it means in our own advancement we are held back. Do you not see that sometimes you are deliberately held back, either because it is good that you should be held back by circumstance or some condition beyond your knowledge, or it is that you yourselves because you know that true progression can only come when you sacrifice yourself for others. Why, when you stay by the wayside to help some lesser soul, someone who has less progress, less knowledge, who is sick and suffering, whatever the case may be, when you help them, you are putting yourself several steps further, though you do not realize it. Mm -hmm. You may say to yourself, oh, if I were not burdened with this or burdened with that, I could achieve this, I could do that. <laughs> How often do we hear this? But if you did but know it, it's, it's those very burdens that make possible your progression. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I never think of my progression or our progression. I only look at the work and think, what are we doing in the world? And there's all this going on. What are we doing? We sit there on a Monday night. The world is not your responsibility. No, but it affects you, doesn't it? You can't ah, yourself the a world yeah. affects you, but it is not your responsibility. Yeah. You may make your contribution to the world, and that is all that you can do. Mm -hmm. If your contribution is a good one, even though from your point of view it may not necessarily be a practical one, but if it is one of love and tolerance mm -hmm. and understanding and in the endeavouring to help and sacrifice, if necessary, yourself in doing it, that is your contribution.